What's going on? It's your boy Sermon, the SermonsDomain.com. This past week and this upcoming week, there's so many releases coming up. So instead of giving a review for every single thing that I wanted to do, I wanted to condense three projects in particular. Uh, one from last week, one that dropped yesterday, and one that drops on Friday. So we'll start off with the one last week. Uh, Andy Minio is, I guess he's a Christian rapper, but I never... And I never really got that term Christian rapper because it's not like they, you know, solely like rap about, you know, God and religion and stuff like that. That's not what Andy does on his, you know, his latest project called Uncomfortable. Um, but basically he told Hip Hop DX, he said, I was inspired by a quote that says, good art should comfort the disturbed and disturb the comfortable. And I, that quote right there stood out because that basically sums up the album. It's an album that could spark a lot of debate and discussion. It's one of those albums you listen to and you just you get lost in the thoughts because Andy is is saying a lot of things that make a lot of sense that <clears throat> is is well, it's just good to hear. Out. And um, one of the lines that stood out to me was, "I apologize for Christians with pickets that say God hates fags. I promise Jesus wouldn't act like that." He says that on the title track. And again, like I said with the you know the hip hop DX line, that kind of sums up the album too. This is the kind of stuff that he's going after. He's, he's tackling, you know, both personal and um, you know, out there, out in the world. Um, Vendetta was one of my favorite pro was one of my favorite songs. Uh, he said Pac did a lot more for me than Barack, and I thought that was like you know a real statement. Um, overall, man, I was impressed. I was interested to hear because I kept hearing about him, you know, through Rob Markman. And, and, you know, I kept seeing his name on the iTunes chart. So I was like, okay, this guy has a following. You know, I'm going to check out his project. And um, overall, I definitely say the verdict is take a listen. Um, yesterday, OT Genesis put out his mixtape R&B Rhythm and Bricks. And I just took a listen on a whim, man. I wasn't, I never liked Coco hated that song i hated everything about that song and it represented you know all that like that that one hit wonder stuff i hated it but i gotta say on this mixtape he does not sound like that record he sounds more polished more developed he's less like you know that that whole that that hook that sound that i'm in love with the coke he wasn't like that <laughs> he wasn't like that on the mixtape he sounds more you know calm and and Really, when I started listening, I'm like, am I listening to OT or is it a guest feature? Because he sounded so different from that. Um, so this is definitely what I want to hear out of, you know, OT in, in terms of music and, you know, his career going further. Um, there's standouts, uh, Push It and I'm Out Here. I'm, I'm Out Here has Wiz Khalifa on it. And um, there's, a, there's a bunch of guest features on it too. Young Dolph, The Game, you know, and even Lil Wayne are the ones that, that stood out to me. Snoop Dogg's on there, but he doesn't really stand out. He's in that rough patch. There's a rough patch from a record called Cheating on My Girl up until Commit. And then once you get past, once you get to Commit, it, it kind of evens out for the rest of the project. But that, you know, three or four song stretch is like, I don't like none of these songs. The Snoop Dogg's feature was included in that. Um, and the reason why, like, for instance, I didn't like Cheating on My Girl because it's a stupid concept. Uh, the concept is like you're cheating on your girl with money. I, what? How, what kind of sense does that make? It doesn't make any sense at all. I mean, I guess if that's, you know, what you're into or something, cool. But, you know, that doesn't really fit, you know, what I believe is cheating. Anyways, um, uh, there was another record on there called Ricky. And it kind of feels like a, a rehashing of Coco with the beat, at least. The beat was, you know, very, like, it had, like, that same kind of melody to it and... That's what that's what stood out to me about that record. But overall, OT Genesis, man, if you're into giving artists a second chance, I say give him a chance with this mixtape, R&B, Rhythm and Bricks. I definitely recommend it. Um, he surprised me enough, and you know, if I if I'm surprised off of one hit wonder, then you know you know it's good. Uh, lastly, man, Eric Sermon, the guy I got my my nickname from. Uh, is releasing a new album this Friday called ESP, uh, Eric Sermon's Perception. And um, f right off the bat, I feel like this album is not going to make a bunch of new fans, but the people that like Eric Sermon's music are going to enjoy it. It doesn't sound like he, he, you know, he lost the beat, none of that. 
And um, I hate to use a term, but it's like it's like that real hip hop sound that you know, and and people that like that, I guess, will appreciate the album, will enjoy it. Um, but at the same time, I dislike that the album comes off that way because you know, there's like a few skits on the album and like you know lines throughout the album. It's kind of like you know. Eric Sermon is not really happy with today's hip hop, and I always hated like you know when veterans you know say that and do that. Like you know, I get it. If you if you are hard to adapt, that's fine. But you don't need to say it publicly. That makes you look foolish. I mean, I guess you know the old people, the older hip hop fans that hear that will probably be like, yeah, I agree with you. But I I personally don't agree. I never I never agree. Even when I'm, you know, 50 and we have a new generation of music, I will definitely, you know, still find something good about music. And that's what I think Eric Sermon is missing. But um, one of the standout for me was the, the Sermon. Um, it has that money, power, respect, influence in the production. And it's very smooth. Um, you know, Eric is, is going in, dropping some, some gems. Um, there's an R&B singer named Voice now. Bad name, first off. Voice is very generic. How am I supposed to Google that and find that? Anyways, uh, he does a great hook on Daydreamers. And that's a record with Too Short. And um, I like the fact that he, he, he has different guests. A lot of the guests are, you know, more, um, you know, older artists like Too Short. Met the Man and Red Man appearing on a record. Crazy Bone. Keith Murray. But then he also reaches out to, like, you know, artists of this generation that kind of, you know, fit into you know, what Eric Sermon likes and what the type of music that he makes. He has, like, Sheik Luch, um, Joel Ortiz, Mass Pike Miles, which still is one of the most underrated artists to me. Uh, Jaron Benson from Funk Volume. Fred the Godson makes an appearance. And um, overall, it's a solid album. If you're a fan of, you know, that real hip-hop sound, definitely check it out this Friday. That's ESP, Eric Sermon's Perception. And, um... Those are my three reviews for now. Uh, stay tuned for more. Uh, let me know your thoughts on these three projects when you listen to them. Um, like the video. Subscribe to the channel if you're not already. Share the video. Uh, follow me on Twitter at Sermons Domain. And as always, I appreciate you for, you know, checking these out. Thank you for your time, man. It's, and until next time, peace.